Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'd like to first thank the uh, Brain Tumor Foundation of Canada for inviting me and also for funding our research. So, just figure this out. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to talk about two cancer concepts today, and uh, the first is metastasis, which I'm sure that uh, most of you already know about, but this is the spread of cancer from its primary site to other places in the body. And the second concept is dormancy, which may be new to some of you. This is um, a concept where cancer cells can exist for um, many years in a state in which they don't divide. So these are the cancer cells that are believed to be responsible for tumor recurrence. Um, they resist chemotherapy. And they're also um, thought to be uh, the dormant cancer cells, um, which are also, well, they're the dormant cells also known as or referred to as non-proliferative or um, quiescent or slowly cycling. So I may refer to them by those terms. So we're focused on brain metastases due to breast cancer. And um, breast cancer is known to metastasize to the lung, liver, brains, and bone, but in our lab, we are focused on the brain. Brain metastases are evident in um, up to 20 to 40% of metastatic breast cancer patients, and uh, are especially high in those patients that are HER2 positive. Um, they have a very poor prognosis, and um, this is mainly due to the fact that they're, um, it's very hard for chemotherapeutics to treat brain metastases because uh, they're, they don't cross the brain effectively. So I'm going to talk about MRI today, and our lab is focused on developing MRI tools to study brain metastases. And um, we're talking about something referred to as cell tracking or cellular MRI. So this isn't uh, the the normal MRI you're probably used to hearing about, which would uh, allow you to see a tumor, cellular MRI is aimed at detecting tumors earlier. So we're trying to find, uh, trying to follow cells, cancer cells, and look at early cellular events. So uh, the main way to do cellular MRI is to use iron oxide nanoparticles to label cells, and then you can see the cell with MRI. So in the examples that are, are on this slide at the bottom, there's um, an image on the left that shows electron microscopy. Uh, so we get these cancer cells to ingest iron oxide particles and they become labeled. So you can see the little black dots in the cells. Um, so a cell may contain hundreds of these iron oxide particles uh, once they're labeled. And the image on the right is MRI of a mouse brain um, which contains a glioblastoma. So this is a, an animal model for glioma and you can see the black region within the brain, which, um, which is where the iron-labeled cells have been implanted. So this method is very sensitive. We can detect down to a single iron-labeled cancer cell within the mouse brain. And that's what you're seeing here. The arrow's pointing to a single, what we refer to as a signal void or a hypo-intensity, and that is a single cell in the brain. So what we're trying to do is follow these cells over time to allow us to study cancer in preclinical models. So we're using a, a human or a patient um, MRI system, but we have adapted this, so we have some customized hardware that um, we use, we have designed to use with, uh, with mouse models. So this is our model system. We are using human uh, breast cancer cells that are brain metastatic. This is a cell line, and it's called MDAMB231BR, HER2. So it's a HER2 positive cell line. Um, again, so what we do is we label these cells. We're labeling them with iron, iron particles, so you can see them with MRI. They also have a red fluorescent dye, so we can see them with histology. And then to begin this experiment, these iron-labeled cells are injected into the um, left ventricle of the beating mouse heart, and that way they're delivered into the circulation and um, they go to the brain. And then we begin imaging them. So we're imaging them uh, on that day and then we follow them for about a month. And this model mimics the, the blood um, spread of cancer cells in the body. So these are some uh, mouse brain images from the first day. So these are four images at different locations in the mouse brain. 
you can see the eyes in the first one. And um, you see all the black dots in the mouse brain. So after we inject them, these cells become arrested in the mouse brain. And um, so we inject a large number of cells just based on the cardiac output of the heart to the brain. We get about three to 5% of them lodging in the brain. And then over time, um, so here you see images at day 19, 21, 26, and 29. Over time, the cells are dividing, so there are fewer and fewer iron particles per cell. And so most of the cells we can no longer see over time because they're proliferative. And in that case, the tumors appear bright. As you can see on day 29 there, there are many uh, tumors in the brain. They appear bright partly because of the uh, fluid associated with them. But there are some tumors and voids that persist in the brain. And um, you can see here, so these are, uh, this is the same image slice of a mouse brain over time from day zero to 28. And you can see uh, how many of these signal voids disappear, as I told you, as the cells are dividing. If you look at the column on the right, number three, um, it begins with signal voids and then it ends with uh, a bright spot, which is the tumor. But in the other panels, you can see where signal voids persist. And these reflect the non-proliferating cells in the brain. So we have, um, because we're imaging at multiple time points, we're able to uh, look back and calculate how many of these cells proliferate and disappear over time and how many are non-proliferative. And um, when we do the math, we can f we found that over 90% of the cells are um, what we call transient, so they do not survive in the brain and they're cleared. And uh, about 4 to 5% of the cells are what we refer to as non-proliferating. So in these cells, they they remain in the brain and they, they retain their iron because they're not dividing. So some other evidence that um, leads us to, to believe that these signal voids represent live non-proliferative cells is shown here. Um, in one study where we compare live cells, uh, the live cells that are injected versus cells that we have uh, killed first and put them in, you see that dead cells are mostly cleared by day 14. So the dead cells don't persist in the brain. And um, this suggests that the voids that we are tracking are live non-proliferative cells. And on the other side of this slide, you see some measurements we make of the degree of contrast. So this is basically how black these regions are, and it can be related to iron content. So here we're showing that uh, this measurement we call signal loss doesn't change over time, um, suggesting that the same amount of iron is contained in these cells over time. So the working hypothesis for these studies is that the retention of these iron oxide nanoparticles in non-proliferative cells can be exploited to monitor the fate of this cancer subpopulation. So I'm going to talk about a study that we've done um, using radiotherapy to treat brain metastases and how we're using cellular MRI to follow the cells. So whole brain radiotherapy is a mainstay treatment for brain metastases, and it's typically used alone for primary treatment if a patient has greater than three metastases. And it can also be used as an adjuvant therapy with surgery or stereotactic radiotherapy to control micro disease. And so in this case, whole brain radiotherapy, or WBRT, is given to the patient after their MRI has detected tumors. The other type I'm going to talk about is referred to as prophylactic treatment. So this is where whole brain radiotherapy is given to a patient before there's any MRI indication of tumor growth. Um, so this is only used for patients who are at very high risk of developing brain metastases. Um, in London, this is uh, performed in patients with small cell lung carcinoma. So these patients are likely to get brain metastases, so they're treated before. And it's being considered for high-risk metastatic breast cancer patients, so those HER2 positive patients I referred to before. So in our lab, the models that we are using for traditional and prophylactic WBRT are shown here. So the traditional WBRT we are calling late here, and um, this is shown at the top. So we are injecting the cancer cells on day zero. 
Then we're waiting um, until 23 days later, which is when we know we can see tumors in the brain. We do the MRI, and if there are tumors in the brain, then we do the radiation on the next two days, two consecutive days. And then we wait and do follow-up MRI on day 32 and 36. So that's similar to what would be done in clinic. In the um, model for early or prophylactic WBRT, we are iron labeling the cancer cells, injecting them and imaging on day zero, and then um, doing the radiotherapy the next two days, days one and two. We do MRI on day four to follow up and then at the end point. So here we're giving the radiotherapy before we know that there is any, uh, any tumors growing. We're using a micro irradiator. So this is a modified micro CT system developed in our labs at Robarts by Eugene Wong's group. So for late WBRT, these are the results shown here, just evaluating the tumor response. You can see the untreated MRI where there's a large, very bright tumor in the box. And for the WBRT treated, um, there's some small tumors detected. And if we look at measurements of the brain tumor volume, you can see that um, at the end point, day 36, there is a, a significant difference. So th there were many more and larger tumors in the animals that uh, were untreated. So this just shows us that in our model systems with the equipment we're using, we can, um, we can reduce tumor response, we can reduce tumor growth with this whole brain radiotherapy. Um, the, in the early WBRT, here we're just showing the delivery of cells, again um, on day zero, many voids in the brain. And here we're showing the MRI monitoring over time. So the white arrow shows a, area, a signal void at the top that you can follow over time that disappears because uh, the cell is dividing and then appears on day 32 as a brain tumor. And the arrowheads uh, for both groups show you signal voids that are, um, that are remaining in the brain over time. When we analyze this data, so in A and B you see the number of metastases and total tumor volume. You can see that um, for the WB, the, the mice treated with the early radiotherapy, we have prevented tumor growth. There were a, a couple of tumors in the hindbrain where we believe the radiotherapy was not applied. But So we blocked tumor growth here. So early WBRT prevented tumor growth. But if you look at the, um, the data in C, here we're showing the percentage of signal voids remaining in the brain. And for both groups, this decreases over time, which is expected. But you can also see that there's no difference. So there's no difference in the number of signal voids in the brain um, in the treated animals. I'm going to skip that for time. But I want to show you this side where we are monitoring the animals for out to 95 days. So there are discrete signal voids in the brain here that, um, and these are early WBRT treated. Um, so there's no tumor growth for this long because of that early treatment. But we're also seeing that these uh, voids persist in the lung out to 95 days. So to summarize, uh, cellular MRI allows for tracking of the fate of single cancer cells from the arrest of a population of these cells in the brain through to the growth of tumors. Um, we can also use this to detect and quantify a population of cells that are not dividing. So this population of cells may represent a reservoir of dormant cancer cells that um, persist in the brain. Cell tracking can be used also to study the responses to cancer treatments. And so what I've showed you is that whole brain radiotherapy impacts the proliferative tumors, but not the non-proliferative cell population. So what this suggests is that treatment failure may be the result of failure to treat all of the cells. So you're treating the, the proliferating cells, which we can see as tumors in MRI, but the dormant cells or the non-proliferative cells are not being treated by radiotherapy. And um, so this may relate to treatment failure. So I just want to acknowledge the people who contributed to this research, especially Donna Merle, who um, most of the, the data was from her thesis, um, and also Amanda Hamilton, who will be taking over this project. Thanks again to the Brain Tumor Foundation for funding, and also I'd like to acknowledge the other sources of funding. Thank you.